Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to the fifth day of my sketch trip in New York City. So today, first of all, I am going to the Met Museum. So yeah, that's the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And um, here I'm outside. And inside is really busy here in the atrium. Everyone's getting their tickets, lining up to go inside. So there are these AI or artificial intelligence generated animations on these um, walls. And on the ground level, there are these classical statues of mythological figures. And this one is named Siren. And it's very much like the Starbucks logo. And here are the beautiful manuscripts from the medieval time. So all of these pages were um, hand drawn, hand painted, and um, handwritten by the monks. So amazing pieces of work. So, so many amazing artifacts from um, hundreds of years ago. And now I'm coming to the upper floor to see the amazingly inspiring paintings by the uh, French Impressionistic artists. And I think this part of the museum is the, uh, the most popular area of the whole museum. A lot of people are here to admire these paintings. This one is by Van Gogh. And Van Gogh is inspiring us to see the beauty in the ordinary such as an old pair of shoes. So these beautiful paintings by Camille Pissarro um, really echoes with my value of sketching on uh, the same location at different times of the year and different times of the day. So these paintings are sensational records of the same park um, at different seasons of the year. Now I'm truly admiring in person the Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. It's just so different looking at this painting um, in real life compared to looking at prints. So these paintings are really inspiring us to paint uh, more than just what we see with our uh, physical eyes. We really have to inject our sensations into each brushstroke, uh, each brushstroke loaded with sensational colors. So back then, these artists were just purely relying on real life observations. Uh, for all of these paintings, the artists had to be there on location and fully immerse themselves into uh, their environment. Their bodies are feeling the heat or the chill in the air. Um, their noses are probably smelling the fragrance of flowers. So I love how they depict the movement of skies. I also love how Vincent van Gogh is playing with the slight distortions of these elements, such as trees and bushes, uh, mountains and grass blades. Everything is buzzing with a passionate energy that he felt with his um, inner spirit, more than just the physical eyes. And I love his use of blues uh, in the sky. It's just like I'm really there and breathing in all the fresh air. Um, keep admiring these by Monet and other famous impressionistic artists and admiring this one with water reflections. So these are the views of higher reality that could only be filtered through the human heart and spirit and not camera lenses. And after walking about in the museum for about three hours, I'm getting kind of tired. So I decided to finish my visit this time. I'll definitely go back again because there's so much more to see. Um, okay, so now I'm situating myself on the bench at Central Park, bathing in the sunshine and ready to sketch the view of the lake, the fountain, the terrace and the skyscrapers in the background. So there's a lady sitting right beside me on the bench talking on the phone. So it's a little bit challenging for me to focus, but I'll do my best. Okay, so I'm starting off with like a quick five minute um, pencil layout just to make sure that I want to include all of the skyscrapers on the higher part of the picture, the terrace, uh, the fountain and the lake on the bottom. Uh, just make sure that I, I have the proportions figured out perfectly. All right, so I'm starting to draw in the middle. Uh, this is the staircase of the terrace. So I'm trying to see each part of the terrace as an abstract shape. For example, um, a little tab of a tra uh, trapezoid, especially the, um, the side of the staircase. It's very much like a long trapezoid. 
And now I'm connecting the top of the staircase, which is aligning horizontally with the uh, angel figure on top of the fountain. And then keep going down from the uh, angel's feet, the upper part of the fountain, shaped like a big dish. And then uh, the very bottom of the fountain, which is the bed surrounding the pool of water. Now I'm starting to add these tiny little umbrellas of the vendors and a lot of people. Uh, little sprays of water coming down from the angel's feet area. And just drawing this other slab of concrete base surrounding uh, the lake around the bank area. And some more smaller little squares and rectangles and then keep drawing these people having fun. Uh, making sure that their heads are pretty small and then more umbrellas. So in New York City, especially at Central Park, there are lots of vendors selling fruits and popsicles, hot dogs, and other um, fast foods. Okay, so now I want to take a break from the terrace area and starting to add some people rowing boats. There's actually a lot of people on the lake today enjoying the sunshine. Uh, very romantic. I think there's a couple here. The guys rowing the boat. Again, just keep these human figures very simple. The boats are like uh, trapezoids of different sizes, depending on the angle we're looking at the boat. And another couple here, the oar, the guy is holding. And the opening of the boat and the body part of the boat is pretty much a, a skinny trapezoid. Okay, and then coming back to the terrace area again, starting to draw the top part of the terrace and some foliage, surrounding it on the uh, very left side, adding the uh, branches and twigs for the foliage. So as I always mentioned in my previous YouTube videos when I'm doing urban sketching, I always incorporate foliage surrounding uh, the urban structures just to give more life to the sketch rather than just uh, straight lines. Okay, and some more beautiful trees behind the terrace. Uh, starting with a quick cloud shape contour outline of the cluster of trees and then simplify the branches and twigs into like uh, hand shapes. Starting to draw these parallel lines for the staircase of the terrace. And then adding some minor details on the bottom like the vendor's cart and some tiny people. And now I'm going to relax a little bit from drawing those urban uh, structures, the straight lines, drawing the fluffy shapes of the foliage and these cute little hand shapes of the branches and twigs. And um, yeah, just focus on the loose organic forms of these trees and bushes um, in the background, in the middle ground, also some closer to the foreground. And then starting to draw these uh, rectangular prism shapes of the sk skyscrapers, which are uh, actually pretty easy to simplify. They're all rectangular prism shapes and inside the patterns are just made of segments and uh, crossing straight lines going horizontally or vertically. Even though uh, roughly these skyscrapers are in rectangular prism shapes, but every single of each are a little bit different because they are of different sizes, heights, and combinations of smaller cubes and rectangular prisms. So that's actually pretty fun to draw these. And then, yeah, so each of them is a little bit unique from each other. Um, keeping the window patterns really simple with dots of very quick uh, horizontal or vertical lines. All right, so that's, uh, this one is probably the tallest building within my sketch. And um, some more simplification of these uh, window areas, uh, dense vertical lines. So drawing now for me is very much like a subconscious practice. The more I do, the more that I know how to do it without thinking too much. I've had a wonderful time here in New York City. Um, the weather has been like very pleasant for five days straight with sunshine and no rain at all. All right, so now the talk tip lady on the phone is gone. Another much more quieter lady sitting beside me right now enjoying the view together. So today is my last day in New York City. So I'm feeling really lucky and blessed to have five straight days of sunshine. So now I'm working on the right side of this sketch by adding some more people uh, walking 
along the bank and these arches for the terrace and the railings um, on top of the terrace. Yeah, so just very simple shapes because things in the distance, they don't have to be uh, hyper detailed. And now I'm moving on to the uh, this huge foliage cluster in the middle and also in the foreground. And these leaves are really visible in front of me. So I'm taking some time and patience uh, to um, draw the details of these leaves dangling on the branches and twigs. Uh, but again, keeping the lines really simple and continuous, uh, these squiggly lines suggesting uh, single leaves. Again, the faster we draw, the looser the lines and shapes are going to look like. And it seems like these uh, leaves are really um, dancing in the wind and sunshine. And last little bit of branches over here on the bottom left, and that's it. Here's the look of my finished line work. And it took me about 30 minutes to draw. And now it's time to really have fun with watercolors. As always, I'm starting to paint the sky area first by just wetting it with clear water, uh, mixing cerulean blue with a tiny bit of cobalt blue, starting with the top part of the sky using horizontal brush marks, blending in a little bit of uh, Viridian green because later in the afternoon, the sky is um, getting more and more turquoise and even green uh, from the middle to the bottom area. Okay, the sky is pretty simple. It's a cloudless, sunny day. Um, okay, so now starting with the first layer of colors for the water, it contains lots of reflective yellow greens. So this is pretty much a blend of yellow ochre, lime green, and um, a little bit viridian green at different ratios. Some parts might be containing a higher ratio of yellow ochre. Other areas might be containing a higher ratio of viridian green or lime green, depending on the value of green that I sense. Uh, overall, it has, it's pretty uh, highly contrasted with um, at least three kinds of greens. Um, in the middle of the water has a bit more cerulean blue because it's the, uh, the color of the sky reflected. And for even better contrast, it's better to wait for this layer to dry off almost completely. All right. So without um, you know, working further on the water, I need to wait a little longer. Just adding some retouches of yellow ochre. I love the golden shimmering uh, ripples on the surface of the lake. Okay, now I need a break from the water areas. Let it dry off a little bit. Now punching on these golden uh, yellow ochre mixed with lime green and a tiny bit of um, viridian green, just according to my sensations, wet onto wet, a uh, bit of lime green and viridian for the bottom area of these foliage. Okay, so higher ratios of viridian green for the bottom half of these foliage. Yeah, so this is really soft, wet onto wet, and the result is very soothing. Yeah, even more concentrated viridian green for the very bottom one third of the foliage. And now just um, glazing these buildings with diluted yellow ochre because the afternoon sunshine is um, kind of um, dyeing or staining these buildings with a golden yellow glow. Yeah, there are just so many lively colors, tons of greens to see. And this town on these glassy and concrete buildings is actually pretty hard to capture with a snapshot using our phone. We really had to be on location to really feel the vibes of this golden sunny afternoon, uh, punching on some retouches of yellow ochre for the top edge of the foliage. Uh, and now I have these uh, middle and foreground bushes and trees to paint in. Now, I think the lake is almost dried off. Now, as you can see, when your previous layer is very much all dried off, your brush mark is very sharp. This is great. This is just the effect that I want for the top layer of the lake, the ripples, nice and sharp. Uh, again, this is a mix of viridian green and a tiny bit of burnt sienna to get a darker shade. Um, and also yellow ochre mixed with burnt sienna for the reflections of the terrace. And um, even higher contrast along the edge of the bank there with very intense green and uh, various brush marks controlled by different hand pressure. So these ripples, uh, they are all interpreted into different um, brushstroke pressures. Okay, 
And now just wetting these foliage areas with uh, clear water. And this is mostly Viridian Green. Uh, these trees here on the left, they're mostly shaded, uh, except for here, a bit more yellow ochre blended in. And the grass field on the bottom of the terrace. Yeah, some more loose choppy brush marks playing with uh, yellow ochre, a little bit lemon yellow, and Viridian Green. As you can see, I am punching on these darker shade of green on top of the lighter tones. Um, this is my you know, method of really effective and clean watercolor paintings, is to always put the lightest values, those vibrant colors on the bottom layer, and the shade colors um, and the darkest darks on the top layer. All right, just keep playing with pretty impressionistic brush marks. Yeah, as you can see, the darkest greens right on the very top layer, not adding this too early. Yeah, so for these foreground bushes and trees, I think I use at least three to four different kinds of greens, starting with yellow green, uh, the mid greens, darker greens, and the darkest greens. And the afternoon sunshine or the early morning sunshine is illuminating everything. So changing uh, the, the tone or the value of this terrace that should be kind of um, a muted brown. So now it's looking really golden because of the amazing sunshine. So I'm playing with yellow ochre and a little bit burnt sienna um, for that uh, quick wash for the terrace. And these blue boats are matching the color of the blue sky, which is really nice. Now I'm using the mix of cobalt blue and a bit of royal purple to shade the left side of these buildings in the background, which is pretty important to give a sense of three dimensionality. And then uh, having a lot of freedom to uh, color in these people's outfits. I think they use a lot of warm colors for those people's outfits in contrast with lots of greens surrounding them. Um, now I wanna add in the darkest greens, which is a uh, Viridian green mixed with burnt sienna containing minimal amount of water, all right, just for the bottom one third of the foliage, just to push the terrace really strongly out uh, from the paper. Yeah, contrast is very, very important. So don't, don't just call your painting done too early. Keep pushing for higher contrast and also adding retouches of uh, yellow ochre and lime green for the top two thirds. So as I was doing the final polish, I see a squirrel showing up from the bush and think uh, he or she was begging for food. Yeah, it's so much fun. I just love squirrels. And then another squirrel showed up and then they started chasing each other. Oh, so adorable. And adding this darkest uh, shade of green for, for this tree or bush over here as well. Uh, the key is to wait for that previous layer to be completely dried before adding this uh, high contrast. Otherwise, your darkest dark is gonna fade out if your previous layer is too wet. So just wait a little longer. Now adding some more impressionistic uh, brush strokes for the lake and then shade these buildings a little bit heavier using the mix of cold blue and royal purple. Yeah, blue purple is great color for shading concrete buildings, give them more life. Uh, some final little polish for the trees here in the foreground. Uh, yeah, just saving these little dots without merging them too closely together, just to give a sense of movement of uh, dancing leaves in the air. And I'm also leaving a little bit of white space on the right edge of the sketchbook, just to give those leaves uh, some room to breathe and to move around. Now, adding a little bit more higher contrast for the staircase using a darker sepia. So just mix um, blue into burnt sienna to get a darker sepia, little brush strokes, and also vibrant reds and blues for those people's outfits, those umbrellas. Uh, so yeah, so I think I do need some reds to shine in between all of these greens and blues. Yeah, final polish here and there, using very small brush marks, making sure that I'm not over painting or overshading some of those areas, um, keeping the good balance of light and shade. 
Um, last little bit of shading for these concrete buildings. Yep, more blue mixed with royal purple. Ooh, there we go. Now they look even more 3D. That's it. So here's the look of my finished on location drawing and painting at Central Park, painting the lake and the terrace in the distance. So thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. Thank you for your interest in my New York City sketch series. So if you like this video, please click like and leave me a comment below. You can subscribe to my channel for uh, weekly updates. So I try to update my channel with two to three new videos every week. So thank you so much for the amazing time in New York City. I will visit you again very soon. Have a great day everyone. Bye!